Hey, Dawn, uh, how are you? I heard you weren't feeling well. Yeah, it's this, it's this stupid cold. I, I don't know if I'll be able to do the show tonight. That's a shame. I, I don't know if we can get another guest on such short notice. No, no, no don't worry. Don Cheadle can still do the show. We just gotta find somebody to play me. I don't understand. Hey, Don, uh, are we doing this or what? Tim Meadows? Yeah, Don told me about his explosive diarrhea. <laughs> it's a cold. Yeah, whatever, man. I'm not a doctor. I, I don't get it. Do you... Do people think you two look alike? No, Craig, that would be racist. I'm just a great actor. Yeah, go on, Tim. Give him a little taste. <sighs> Hi, I'm Don Cheadle. I was in Hotel Rwanda, which I hear is a very important film. I also star in Iron Man 2, playing the role of Black Iron Man. <laughs> you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Mm, no, no, it's stupid. Nobody's gonna buy this. You, wait a minute, are you kidding me? Tim Meadows just subbed for, for Meryl Streep on Letterman last yeah, night. Yeah, that's right. It's true. I'm, you know, actually, uh, to be honest, I've always felt like a 60-year-old white woman. No, I'm sorry, there's no way I'm agreeing to this. Oh, come on, Craig. I've already shaved my body hair. Why, why would you do something like that? I have the normal amount of body hair. What's... Why did you do that? I don't know. Okay, let's be reasonable here. I'm sure we can... <coughs> oh, <coughs> excuse me. You, I'm sure we can... You okay, Craig? I mean, uh, if you need me to sub, I can do it for you tonight. I'm Craig Ferguson, and I have big man boobs. <laughs> that is, that's amazing. Thank you. Actually, it is pretty good. Yeah. Me. A lot of people confuse me with Tim Meadows or Don Tito, but it's really me. Oh, I'm Craig Ferguson with my great big man boobies. <laughs> it's a great day for America, everybody. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's a it's a great day. It's a great day for our former Vice President Dick Cheney, who was released from hospital today. He's doing very well. Doctors say he'll be up and shooting lawyers in the face in no time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I disagreed with Cheney about a lot of things, but when he shot that lawyer in the face, you took my heart, Dick. <laughs> we wish you all the best, Dick. By the way, best Dick was the name of a. Uh, never mind. <laughs> An award I won. Ah, uh, the... Uh, <laughs> all right, keep going, keep going, and the censor won't notice. All right. Hey, 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 I heard about this today. The, the residents of a Chicago nursing home for the old folks have formed a biker gang. A biker gang! <laughs> full of senior citizens. We're <laughs> born to be... Uh, forget. <laughs> Get your motor. <laughs> it's a great day for the uh, the Twitter, uh, the folks at Twitter. The uh, I don't know if there are folks at Twitter. I guess yeah, everybody who's on Twitter. I guess I don't think there's like a big place where they all let's get these Twitters moved along. <laughs> but they, anyway, there's a new member of Twitter, a very important one. The Dalai Lama opened a Twitter account. I know. <laughs> Sure, why? I think he just did it to piss off China. Everything that the, everything the Dalai Lama does pisses off China. It's like he's Ellen DeGeneres and China is Simon Cowell. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, I realize some of you have no idea what the Twitter is, and until two weeks ago or so, I, I was just like you. I didn't know what Twitter was. When I overheard people talking about Twitter, I thought, finally, my favorite game, Twister, is making a comeback. <laughs> but Twitter and Twister are very different, because uh, in Twitter, nobody gets mad at me for being naked. <laughs> Although it was like that time I won that award. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cut that out, you bastard. All right. Anyway, uh, Twitter hasn't been around very long. It was created in 2006 by, uh, I don't know, uh, Jack Twitter or something. Else. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, Jack Twitter! Uh, Basically, uh, Twitter is an online service that allows you to share what you're thinking with all your friends. Um, and I hear you ask, and I say, but Craig, how is that different from other social networking sites like the FaceTube or the... <laughs> I don't know, MyTubes or whatever it is. Uh, or my favourite one, kissablemen.com. Well, look, let me... Look, I don't know, right? I don't know why the Twitter is different from other... Look at me, I could be someone's grandpa. I don't know how Twitter worked. I'm still... I'm still trying to figure out how the, the little elves make the music come out of my iPod. I don't know how to <laughs> All I know is that the Twitter is very popular with the young people and me. Sometimes I'll be at home and I'll pick up my cell, my cell phone and I start typing away and instantly it makes me feel 20 years younger. <laughs> and then I put on my glasses and I realise I've been typing on the TV remote. <laughs> I wondered why the channels were changing. <laughs> I should join that biker gang. <laughs> Ian, look, if you don't know what they do on the Twitter, what you do is you type on a little message and then anyone who gives a crap can read it. I joke around on the Twitter like I do on this show, but on the Twitter, I have limited tiny space to do it. <laughs> as opposed to this showbiz extravaganza you see in front of you. This giant Carnegie Hall of a studio. This icon, this shed. Now listen, I'd like to make something clear to you. I, I, you don't have to use the Twitter to be a fan of this show. There is only one requirement to be a fan of this show, insomnia. <laughs> Two, two requirements for this show, insomnia and no cable. <laughs> but, you know, I tell you why I, I tell you why I like the Twitter. Like, listen, don't, don't clap over me talking. I did, a, I did a show last night with no audience at all. I don't need you anymore. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, you made me, but you can break me as well. That doesn't make sense. Anyway, look, I like the Twitter because most people, when they tweet on the Twitter, that's what you call it, they're quite positive. You know, it's like, uh, excited for the weekend, or just got back from the gym, or just had sex with Tiger Woods. Just things. <laughs> everyday things that everyday people do, every day. And you're... <laughs> Anyway, you're only allowed to use 140 characters on Twitter, just a few sentences, and it's very difficult to start an argument with only 140 characters. <laughs> Some people think 140 characters is too tight a restraint, but maybe I like restraints. <laughs> maybe I like restraints if you pull my hair and call me a dirty girl. Maybe I like that. <laughs> Yeah, back to creepy old me then. And I have to admit, though, I'm quite fickle with new gadgets. Before long, I'll probably move on to the next big thing, which at my age is probably hip replacement surgery. Or something. It's a good thing the Twitter didn't exist when I was a kid, though. I had enough distractions. I could just hear my mother, Craig, are you upstairs playing with your Twitter up there? <laughs> no, Mom, I'm just masturbating. Okay. That's right. I probably should have said that when there was no audience here. <laughs> the twelve's catching on, though. Apparently all, uh, well, one-third, one-third or so, about one-third of all the members of Congress are on Twitter. 
I know. <laughs> That's, now we know why, nothing is getting done. And what? They're too busy sending angry emoticons to each other. <laughs> do you know what I do like, though? I like it when uh, CNN makes Anderson Cooper read the tweety things out on the air. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, because he has to read, you know, tweety names, which are so kind of odd and not... The, and he's always like, oh, financial derivatives increase the probability of another crisis. So this is according to Jack Hole 69. It's a very... Uh... <laughs> so it's time for the break. Is that what you're saying? You're in your own passive-aggressive way, sitting there in the dark. Well, it is. It's time for the commercials, which is always a, an awkward time around here. <laughs> because when you're not here, they hurt me. <laughs> Okay. Uh. <laughs> hey, we're all in this together. <laughs> Should we do the uh, Twitters and the emails? Do the jingle then, hurry up. Twitter is the thing with all the tweets. You and your friends stay in touch, but never me. Mode. Yeah, ass mode. All right, all right. Uh, let's see. We got the Twitters and the emails and the e tweets and all. This is a tweeter from uh, Rachel in Allentown uh, who says, Craig, can men and women be friends without the man wanting to sleep with the woman? Husband says no. I disagree. <laughs> Husband is right. Unless man is gay. Actually, can men and women be friends? I don't know. They should do a movie about that or something. <laughs> this is an email from Diane in Paso Robles in California. <laughs> Who says, Dear Craig, my 15-year-old daughter's boyfriend says he is 90% straight when he is with her. <laughs> is that enough? <laughs> well, look, uh, on the one hand, uh, your daughter's 15 years old, so it should be a moot point. <laughs> right? And then 90% straight, that's pretty straight. <laughs> But I don't think it works like that. I don't think there are degrees of straight or gay. It's not like karate. <laughs> it's not like, well, you can move on to ladies now. No, it's not like that. 90% straight, what does that mean? This is from Eduardo, who's 90% straight in, uh... <laughs> no, he's 100% straight. Uh, he's in Mexico City in Mexico. Uh, he says, hi, Craig. If Los Angeles ever gets a football team, what name would you suggest for that NFL franchise? LA Angels 90% straight. <laughs> Actually, that's way too straight for most men in LA. I think it'd have to be about 40% straight. This is uh, David from Rosebud in Arkansas. Rosebud. He says, uh... <laughs> All right, film students, are you ready? It was the sled! <laughs> <laughs> now you don't have to sit there for three hours! <laughs> what is he talking about? You know what I'm talking about. 
Anyway, uh, David in Rosebud, Arkansas says, Dear Craig, my neighbor's dog barks all night long. Any suggestions about stopping the dog from barking? <laughs> nah, you'll have to move. <laughs> it's the only thing to do. If you, if you live near a barking dog, move. You probably want to go one of the no-dog states. <laughs> and who doesn't love dogs? You, apparently. <laughs> the person whose name is over there on the floor. <laughs> in Arkansas. <sighs> <laughs> this is from Mark and Clymer in uh, uh, America. Uh, he says... Uh, <laughs> Craig, if I get nervous, I do this weird laugh. <laughs> he doesn't write that. I just made up a weird laugh to kind of help the story along. Is there a trick that you know of to make this stop? It's killing my game with the ladies. You probably the best thing to do is drink a lot. If you're gonna, if you're going out on a date, try to get really hammered before you meet your date, or you know, take some powerful uh, depressant type drugs. <laughs> Which you know, of course. Legal ones. <laughs> and drink responsibly, CBS cares. <laughs> All right, well, it's that time again for another commercial break. They come up so often these days. <laughs> what? That is good, is it? Is it good to have lots of commercial breaks? Good for you, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's good for you. You line in your pockets like the Wall Street fat cat you are. Hurt in a car wreck? You have damage to your car, medical treatment expenses, time lost from work. But our consultation is free. It's time to call the Becker Law Office at 1-800-755-3000. You know, vacuum cleaner. <laughs> You know the one? The one with the proper amount of suction. <laughs> I like to vacuum over here. Ooh, this looks dirty. I hope I've got the proper amount of suction. <laughs> we'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. to the show where we have an audience. <laughs> Let me finish. We have an audience who would rather be somewhere else <laughs> and a host who has nowhere else to be. <laughs> My uh, first guest today is in, a, is in a movie. He's a big movie star, actually. He's in uh, Brooklyn's Finest, which is in theatres on March the 5th. Take a look at this. Lovely Don Cheadle, everybody, Don Cheadle. Yeah. Welcome, Don. Welcome. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Hey. Yep. In the in the uh, in the movie there, when I you know I did that after the clip. The little girl. Yeah, you thing. should have done that in the movie. I know. When you were talking to her, you said, hey, bring it, and then go like that. Yeah. yeah I, I, when you did it, that's exactly what I thought backstage. I was like, man, if we could reshoot that scene, that's, that would go in there. Well, you, you no, the, the director who did this movie, this was... Uh, the, Antoine the Foucault. Yeah, he did... Yeah. Uh, Training time, Day. Training. He did Training Day. I yeah. loved that movie. Yeah. And uh, Denzel Washington, he did a lot of that in Training Day, as I recall. <laughs> or it might, it might have been cut out. I saw the director's cut. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw some bootleg version, and it didn't... It didn't, didn't have, have that, that in didn't it? Didn't have that in Oh, yeah, that would ruin the whole movie yeah, for me. Yeah. <laughs> Are you, uh, are you are you okay? Because earlier on, I thought you were sick. Well, I did. I did have a little. Cold. It wasn't exploding diarrhea. As right. Well. Yeah. So you guys are all safe. Hey, if, if, it was, if it was that explosive, I'd want to actually yeah, film yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. It's a Gallagher show. Because that would be a show, YouTube yeah. sensation. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. 
man. No, I'm, I'm fine. I'm right. fine. I'm glad that uh, Tim, uh, you know, was there to sub in for me. But yeah, yeah. I, I got it. I Do got people it. say that you and Tim look alike? Has oh, anybody ever God, said that? All the time. I've been on... I, I was... His wife came up to me one time. Oh, hey, hey. No, I don't know. <laughs> Nothing happened. Right, okay. But she did say, wow, I'm surprised. It's amazing. It's amazing. And I was on a plane, and a flight attendant came over and gave me a couple of bottles of Cavassier, and I said, what's that? <laughs> I said, what is that? That's Tim, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is ladies' man. That's like, right, yeah. ladies' man. Yeah. I wasn't in that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, that, you're, you're thinking of Hotel Rwanda. It's yeah, a completely it's different thing. mood. Yeah, 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 totally different thing. Now, are you? Uh, were you up at the Pebble Beach golf thing? I was up I was. around that. The uh, I, I, you I were was doing stand up. Yeah, I was there, doing right? stand up in yeah. Carmel. Yeah, didn't call me. Uh, no, but no, 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 I was. Uh, yeah, I went to Pebble Beach. It was great. Golf. I didn't know you. I didn't know you were there. I, 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 I could have called you, but I don't have your number, or uh, and I've still got the. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. And then there's the whole not being allowed to be within 30 feet of you. Oh for, right, uh, right. <laughs> That, but that, 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 that's up in December. Yeah, I know. We're good. Then look at December, girl. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, uh, do you play, you play or were you watching the golf? No, no, I play. I, I, I enjoy the game. Uh, I'm, you know, I was almost really good, but I, I, I got to get in the mindset of acting like a golfer. If I could just take... Well, you better the, not do that. But you know, it's like, you know... Well, but you want to you take, you know, like, if, you can act like a cop, you can act like, if you act like a golfer and get into the mindset, I may have golfed better, but I wasn't. Yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, you, you can't act, well, you see where I'm going with No, this. I do, yeah, yeah. I do. It's kind of insulting, but I get it. No, come on, it's no, not no, insulting. No, 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 not, no, not all golfers are like that. Most, go some, a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> now, it's a pro-celebrity um, uh, thing, isn't it? Yeah, Celebrities it's, a, it's and... a celebrity. You play with the pro. Right. And there's a team, and you have to make the cut, like regular, you know, like Sunday. You have right. To make so you, who was the pro you were playing with? I was paired with Jason Gore, who right. uh, plays out of uh, Valencia, California. Right, and uh, you you play with him and you go around together. And who were the other celebrities that were there now? George oh, Lopez Bill is always there. Yeah, Bill Murray was there, George right. Lopez was there, Andy Garcia was there. Right. Kelly Slater was there and shot 60, I don't know if you guys follow golf at all, but he shot 67 on his own ball. His own ball? That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. I know. I, it seemed like it was going somewhere. Well, I t I'm the only Scotsman who doesn't play golf. <laughs> what is wrong with you? I don't know. I You're smart. That's what no, it is. I, well, it kind of like every, my people in my family play golf. They yeah. get obsessed by it. Yeah. Like when George Lopez was here, he was like, I can't believe you. The only Scot He's been to Scotland. He says exactly. when he dies, he wants his ashes scattered on the Royal Nation golf course in <laughs> oh, Scotland. <laughs> I'm like, are you nuts? Yeah. He's like, he loves animals it. animals out there, right? Yeah, yeah. You can't do that. No, you can't do that. No. Are you obsessive about it? No, no, I'm not. I did play today, but I'm yeah. not obsessive, <laughs> and I am going to try to play tomorrow, but it's not an obsession. I can let it go. Yeah, really. <laughs> Is the first step admitting that you have a problem? Yeah, I guess. I think okay. the first, that used to be, I think the first step now is TMZ finding you coming out. <laughs> That's the first step now. I think you're right. Yeah. The steps have changed. Yeah. You're right. It used to be back in the day you had to find out for yourself. Now right. it's broadcast on television. You go, is that me? Ah. Yeah, and, exactly. And then you... You're uh, on the floor with the hamburger. Yeah. Tell me about the film now. In the, in the film with the... Uh, oh, yeah, no, no. <laughs> Less ham, I know. I know. It's bad. I know. Anyway, uh, in the, the film, you're, you're an undercover cop who goes like this a lot. Right. Right. Yeah. They cut or that. doesn't do that. No, I, I, I wanted to do that. Um, but no, he's a, he's an undercover cop who's uh, gone under with this uh, drug crew, and he's uh, got to turn his best friend in. If he if he if he takes this uh, mission, he's right. got to take uh, take his friend down. Wesley Snipes plays uh, my, my best friend at the thing. Oh. Uh -huh. did you go undercover to learn about it, or did you use a lot of hard drugs? That's to right. Yeah, yeah. I thought undercover. That's going to take. Yeah, a lot everybody of time. does. All everybody the actors that. do that. I'm going the other I'm way. Take a lot yeah, of go drugs. the other way. Yeah, yeah. and she sell a lot of drugs. Okay. <laughs> In, in some states, that's still illegal. You do know that, right? Not for an actor. <laughs> Not for a celebrity actor. There you ah, go. That's there you right. Go. No, you know the. Uh, in fact, I went for a walk today with my friend. And I walked down. Uh, <laughs> okay. Right, and, no, it, there's a point to this. And, okay. I, and I was walking down in Venice Beach, and the, all the the marijuana dispensary. I, I haven't been oh, down yeah. there. It's crazy down yeah. there. Have you seen it? It's jumping off. It's, I've heard there's a lot of that going on down there. Oh, well, it, and all the like outside the marijuana store, there's the like it's the, like medical marijuana. There's a guy with, like dressed as a kind of Adam's Family doctor or something like that. There's a kid outside going, "Come on in, come on in." Right. I was walking by. And he said. 
said, hey, you, uh, it's, not, it's not a crime to feel good and stuff. And I'm like, look at me. I've taken marijuana. I know what you're talking about. Leave me alone. Right. I had enough. Right. You know. yeah. Been there. Been there. Been yeah. there. But they, uh, they all think it's new, you know. No, uh, it's, they're, they're, they're cropping up all over the place. Do you ever uh, smoke marijuana when you're playing golf with your celebrity no, buddies? No, no. I've never, never, no. <laughs> okay, that'll just uh, remain between us. Yeah, then. we'll yeah. keep that. Yeah. You're all right. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you very now, much. what about uh, the last time you were here? We were talking about some charity work you're involved in. What are you up to with that? S still doing that. Still uh, have the poker tournaments that we have, usually on the eve of the uh, World Series, the main event that's right. uh, held in Vegas. Uh, so we're doing that again this year. You know? Are you are you a good poker player? A lot of the celebrities that play poker are not I'm, so good. I'm idea. getting better. Yeah, I'm getting better. Any money left? There's <laughs> <laughs> no. no, no, no. <laughs> Because you play, you play with Annie Duke, right? Yeah, 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 Annie, yeah Annie's a part. She's uh, actually one of the co-founders you know, founders of the, the charity Annie Up for Africa. That, that Right. So, yeah. And I see her off. She has a lot of money. She has won. She's done a good job. She's yeah. won well. She's really good at poker. She, and what she does apparently. is... You, no, she's really good at poker. And what she does is she... Apparently, what the, the thing is amongst poker players is they like to lose their money to her. Like it's some badge of honor. I'm yeah. like, this is nuts. Yeah, I don't like yeah. it. I don't like it. And she's yeah. a friend, and I don't want to lose money. No, 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 no. <laughs> she's been here. She's a very nice woman, but she can earn her own money. I'm not giving her my money. There you go. <laughs> if I had any money, would I be working in this stuff? I ask you. I started to mention that, but you, you very eloquently talked about it in the monologue, the shed. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty bad, isn't it? Do you do they know what these lights are actually? Have you ever taken the camera backstage and shown them the, what what, these the twinkling the, lights? The, the are? twinkling lights of LA yeah. laid out behind us and the It's like <laughs> It's like eleven guys with flash flashlights. It's bad. Yeah. It's bad. It's bad. Yeah. People think it's kind of my shtick, you know, but it's really a dump here. No, it's bad. It? Yeah, it's yeah. bad. <laughs> I had to move something in the dressing room. The guy said, hey, can you get the other end of that? I'm like, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's bad. Wait a minute, was that a tall guy, a mustache? Yeah. We're looking for that guy. He steals all our stuff. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I helped him with something to his car. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's okay. Right. Well, listen, it's nice to see you again. I'm, uh, thanks for fitting you. us in between the golf. Thank you. Yeah, very yeah. Much. yeah. The lovely Don Cheadle, everybody. We were right back. apologize on behalf of myself and the CBS Corporation. Look at the state of this place. Look at the state of it. Dust everywhere, scuff marks on the floor, little bits of fluff and lint. <laughs> if only we had a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> a vacuum cleaner with a ball. <laughs> a vacuum cleaner with the proper amount of suction. <laughs> I, I love that commercial so much. Uh, my next guest is a best-selling author of uh, a very clever uh, woman, a very good writer. Uh, I'm a bit intimidated by her. She wrote a book called The Glass Castle, and her latest book is called Half Broke Horses, which is about horses that are almost out of money. <laughs> How much have you got? 20 bucks. <laughs> 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 That's the stupidest joke I've ever done. Thanks, everybody. Uh, these books are in stores now, and they're doing very well. You should go and buy one before they run out. Please welcome the lovely Jeanette Walls, everybody. Jeanette Walls. Now, we've met before, of course. That's right. We met at the book fair in New York. You were on the panel. You were actually 
moderating the panel. I was moderating the panel because yes. I had a book out, and in order to be in the company of real <laughs> authors, my powerful publishers had put me on there as the kind of vulgar entertainer <laughs> at the start. And then I read, I read your book because you were going to be there, and it's really good. Oh, thank you, thank you. I remember because I said at the book fair, this is Jeanette, and her book's much better than mine. <laughs> and, and everybody, uh, the, uh, the, the, my publisher was like, shut up, shut up. But that's, that's not entirely, your, your book was fabulous. Oh, really, you know, no, 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 I'm not just saying that. And I, I'm a big fan of memoirs. I think that memoirs get a little bit of a bum rap. People think we're out there trying to say, oh, these horrible things happened to me, please feel sorry for me. And that's not it at all. And the reason I liked your memoir so much is it was really honest. And you really got, I mean, I, it's you really told about this complicated person. No, no, I'm serious. It was it, he used to be the little fat kid. He used to no, no, no. He used to be a little fat kid and, and like was and was and was bullied and stuff. And it just it was it was. In fact, I think some of the people who bullied you when it, when you were a kid in Scotland are cousins of the kids who bullied me. Yes, they they were. They, they, they immigrated and got and started exactly, bullying you. Exactly. Yeah. The suitors. The suitors. They used to bully us. Suitors. Yes. Not Ronnie Sophie Su Suter. No, Ro Ronnie Suter bullied you, right? Ronnie Suter. No, yeah. I had to change that name. That wasn't oh, his okay. real name. Oh, okay. No, no. Oh, okay. No, yeah, I had to change his name because they said he might sue. I said, he's a criminal in Scotland. He's not going to sue you. <laughs> Like, no, change his name. Yeah. Did you have to do that in, in the Glass to, yeah, Castle? a bunch of the names, yeah. 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 This is a very movie. You had a very, very difficult uh, early life, didn't you? I mean, well, with... yeah. Um, I, sport, I aspired to being poor white trash. I was that low down. I was yeah. trying, yeah, yeah. It was, it was hard. Well, you know, I, I tried to convince my mom one time to buy us, um, to get us tires so we could whitewash them and put them in the front yard and make things look a little nicer, you know. <laughs> <laughs> end up in New York? Well, I know how you ended up in New York because yeah. I read the book, but the, uh, the, what does the glass castle mean? Well, um, we used to, you know, we were always doing the skedaddle. We were always sleeping in cars and sleeping in cardboard boxes and stuff. And my father, he said all that running around was temporary. One of these days he was going to build us a great big mansion. And he called it the glass castle. All he had to do was find gold. And then he would mm. build us the mansion. Yeah, there's, there wasn't a lot of gold around. <laughs> really, <is it? laughs> and then, because this, yeah. this is the book I, 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 I um... I was with you in New York about the the, uh, the, the half-broke horses, about these poor horses that are almost out of cash. <laughs> Is that maybe the worst joke that's ever been done? No, uh, it's worse. <laughs> But the uh, but this is a it's a a novel. Yeah. But it's um uh, yeah. uh, about your grandmother, right? Right. Yeah. She was a horse breaking, gun toting, poker playing, moonshine selling school teacher. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and she was. She was. Yeah. Yeah. But I got the story all through my mom, and so I don't know how much of it is true, uh, and I wrote it in first person. So. Um, I called it. I called it a novel. But it's really. I mean, is yeah. th is there a big change in the publishing community because of the million little pieces and James Fry and yeah, that kind of thing? You know, I. I think that people look at it all a lot more closely. Yeah, I think uh. so. But. It, 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 People are just interested in a good story. You know, I think so. I mean, it was funny because I remember yeah. I was doing my memoirs and they said that. Um, you know, my, uh, the editor would say, "Now is this true?" Well, man, I was drunk. I don't know. <laughs> I think so. I think it's true. I said, well, how much did you actually drink? I'm like, I don't know. It's not Ooh -la -la. Weight Watchers. It's, it's alcoholism. It's, it is what I drank what I drank. You know. Uh, yeah. It, it, I mean, did they give you a hard time about that? No, they, no. They, they went through and made me change the names and... and so that people wouldn't sue. And did you get very, did you find it a very emotionally taxing oh, thing? To, oh my to gosh, it? oh gosh, I was, I was crying. I'm not talking about pretty Hollywood tears. I'm snot slinging red nose and, and, uh, <laughs> and, but it was, it was, um, it was hugely cathartic. I really, once you're finished with it, somebody once told me, he said, uh, secrets are a little bit like vampires. They, they suck the life out of you, but they can exist only in the darkness. And once they're exposed to light, there's a moment of horror. Oh, and then, yes. poof, they lose their power. Yeah. That's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's old-fashioned vampires. Now vampires can, uh, you know, they've got six-pack yeah, abs, they're yeah. vegetarians, they're... <laughs> they, don't, they don't actually even suck your blood. They just care about your feelings or something. <laughs> I don't think that's a vampire, do you? Do you write a proper vampire book? Write about maybe 
maybe one of your other maybe yeah. it could be a novelization about your great your great grandfather who's a vampire that's a good idea i have it's i not, have no it's not a good idea no, thank you but it's not see you've written a couple of novels i have no, no, one, no anymore. Not one. Yeah. I, I have no imagination i can't make things but what up. are you talking no, about no. you did no, no this no. is a fantastic no. book i just filled in the gaps that i didn't know i just you know i i don't know whether much of it is true that's why i called i i you know well that's all right though that's no, that's right no. fiction isn't it well that's why i call it fiction but right. but it's not it's not it's just sort of taking what you know and just sort of plugging up the little holes yeah. right so it's more kind of what lawyering yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So what, what, we, what are you writing now, then? Are you continue to write memoirs? I'm trying to find another wacky family member to exploit. You know, I just uh, so. have you got have you got many? Yeah. Seems oh like yeah. You know. oh yeah. 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 No, it's funny. I thought writing a memoir is a bit like cleaning the garage. Yeah. It is. You know that you clean it. and You go well. That's that done. And then you go back a couple of days later. and Go now. What the hell happened here? <laughs> and then you have to do it all over again. You can go forever. No. No. You know, a lot of memoirs do a bunch of memoirs, and I just sort of, I already sort of squeeze that. Space. Sponge. What do you yeah. what do you read? Do you read that kind of thing, or do you read? I love it? memoirs. Yeah. 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 Whose memoirs are you uh, are you currently reading or recently read? Well, um, I love This Boy's Life by Tobias Wolf. I think that's wonderful. Right. I don't and know. And of course, that. well, of course, that. this. Um, Tell me about it. Um, it's just it's not all not that not that much happened. It was it was sort of low key. Right. Um, so the hard sale you're hitting me with, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Gotta read that. Not a lot happens and it's pretty low key. Of course, you know, there's, there's Angela's Ashes. Which oh, yeah, no, that's a fantastic book. Yeah, yeah Frank was here uh, Frank yeah, before yeah, he died. He's yeah. lovely, Frank McCord. Yeah. Did you meet him? Oh, yeah, yeah, a number yeah. of times. And, you know, I just think it's a prime example of it. You can take a, a, you know, we all have our demons, right? We all got the oh, demons. Yeah, yeah. yeah so you, yeah. the trick is you put a harness on them demons and put them to work for you. The I like did. the way you talk, lady. <laughs> You talk pretty. <laughs> Put a harness on them beans. I like it. I think it's fantastic. You should. You had me at harness, actually. <laughs> hey, um, I can't. I can't. Uh, I can't recommend uh, these both of these books highly enough. Actually, I know that some of you are watching the show are only watching it because you can't uh, find anything to read. So. Um, <laughs> So there you go, problem solved. And, and I know many of you will have read the books, and, and to you I say, congratulations. <laughs> but they are, they're, they're very, very good. You're very, very clever and talented and, and a good writer. Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm amazed I actually like you. <laughs> thank you for coming to see you. The lovely Jeanette Walls, everybody. We'll be right back. Mañana. Hey, hey, wait, uh, the cat. We didn't do the Spanish word of the day. <laughs> hey, we have to have the Spanish word of the day. Do the uh, Spanish word. Right. And now, Craig's Spanish word of the day. Today's word is fracaso. Fracaso. <laughs> Fracasso, eh? <laughs> Failure. Now, what I like to try and do in order to remember the Spanish word of the day is to form it into a sentence so that the word stays lodged in my mind. So let's see. Uh, if, for example, on the show we add a sketch or two... <laughs> ...and they were a fracasso... <laughs> Fracasso. <laughs> Perhaps we'd have to cut them out. <laughs> and then I'd have to do the Spanish word of the day at the end of the show. 